Good evening. Welcome to Zion Lutheran Church on this Thanksgiving evening. We worship our Lord because he is the one who gives us all and provides for us. And that's our theme this evening is our God provides for us. And so we give him thanks. And today we want to see how God's word encourages that and also helps us to fight against those times when we don't want to give thanks to our Lord. As we worship this evening, we'll follow the order of worship that's found in your worship folder. You do not need to stand for the opening verses. We'll go right into the hymn, uh, Joyous Light of Heavenly Glory following, though. Please join me now. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Stay with us, for it is evening. Be our light and scatter the darkness. Please stand. Blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Almighty and merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed what we have devised and desired in our hearts. We have offended you and sinned against your holy law. We have done those things that we should not have done. And we have not done those things that we should have done. Have mercy on us, Lord. Spare us, forgive us, and restore us according to your promises in Christ Jesus. God, our merciful Father, has forgiven all our sins. He sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer and Savior. Jesus paid the penalty for our guilt by his death on the cross and freed us from death by his resurrection from the grave. We have peace with God now and forever.
heart and hands and voices who wondrous things has done in whom his world rejoices who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today oh may this bounteous god through all our life be near us with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us and keep us in his grace and guide us when and free us from all ills in this world and the next. All praise and thanks to God, the Father now be given, the Son and Him who reigns with them in highest heaven, the one eternal God, who mirth and Adore, for thus it was, is now, and shall be evermore. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, your generous goodness comes to us new every day. By the work of your Spirit, lead us to acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits and serve you in willing obedience. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. On this Thanksgiving evening, we give our attention to God's word. He speaks to us first from the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verses 10 to 18. And these are the words that we're going to meditate on a little bit later in our worship service this evening. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws, and his decrees that I am giving you this day. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large and your silver and gold increase and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. He led you through the vast and dreadful wilderness, that thirsty and waterless land with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the wilderness, something your ancestors had never known, to humble and test you so that in the end it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. The word of the Lord. We'll join in singing our psalm for today. It is a new psalm. The melody and the words are a little bit different, but it is a simple psalm, so we'll join together in singing it in unison.
Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his the sheep of his pasture. Our second lesson is recorded for us in Paul's letter to the Christians in Philippi, chapter 4, verses 10 through 12. And here we're reminded that as we give thanks, sometimes we give thanks when things aren't going so well in our lives, but we've learned to trust our God and that brings thanks to our hearts. I rejoiced greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no, no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more than once when I was in need. Not that I desire your gifts. What I desire is that more be credited to your account. I have received full payment and more than enough. I am amply supplied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent. They are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. We join in the gospel acclamation. You'll sing the Alleluia. I'll sing the tone and then repeat the Alleluia. to the Lord for he is good his love endures forever Alleluia 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 Our 
gospel lesson is recorded for us in the gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 17, reading verses 11 to 19. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. This evening, our confession of faith will be a portion of the creed, the first article of the creed, along with the explanation from Luther's small catechism. We'll join together in speaking. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God created me and all that exists, and that he gave me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my mind and all my abilities. And I believe that God still preserves me by richly and daily providing clothing and shoes, food and drink, property and home, spouse and children, land, cattle, and all I own, and all that I need to keep my body and life. God also preserves me by defending me against all danger guarding and protecting me from all evil. All this God does only because he is my good and merciful Father in heaven, and not because I have earned or deserved it. For all this I ought to thank and praise, to serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. Please be seated. We continue with our hymn of the day, Let All Things Now Living, number 507.
The undeserved love of our Savior Jesus be with you all. The word of God that we're going to meditate on this evening are the words from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 10 to 18, which I read a few moments ago. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Gracious Lord Jesus, so much you have given, so much you have loved. Teach us tonight to be truly thankful for all that you have given and all that you have done for us. In your name we pray, amen. Dear friends, I think most of you that are here tonight and on a line perhaps, remember 9-11. And those of you who weren't old enough to remember it probably have heard quite a bit about it. You might remember the death and destruction of that day. You might remember the heroes who ran into the Twin Towers to save the people and ended up perishing with many that were in those towers. You may remember the people in Flight 93 who were flying over a field in Pennsylvania and sacrificed their own lives in order to save other people. You might remember the people who rescued their co-workers in the Pentagon from that fiery inferno. And maybe you remember that at the time, and for a little while after, there was a mantra that began to go out through our entire country. And that mantra was, never forget. That mantra, never forget, was saying more than just remember what happened on 9-11. It was also suggesting that what happened on 9-11 should affect our lives in the future and how we lived and how we acted. It was a call to self-sacrifice. It was a call to heroism. It was a call to peace and unity in our country. And to some extent, indeed, it was a call for reparations against those terrorists that had done this vile and terrible action. Never forget. But America has forgotten to a great extent. It's not peace and unity that you find among our politicians today, but civil war. Animosity and hatred has become the mantra of our nation right now. Not self-sacrifice, but self-serving attitudes are the ones that are practiced by many, many across our land. People often forget. And when they forget, it changes how they live. And that was the warning that the Lord had for his people when they were on the precipice of entering into that promised land where God was going to give them so many things they couldn't even imagine it. And so the Lord was saying to them, never forget. And first of all, he was saying, never forget what I have done for you. Do you remember where the people of Israel were before they were standing on the shores of the Jordan River ready to go into the promised land? They had been in slavery in Egypt. And following that time of slavery in Egypt, they'd been in the wilderness for 40 years, a dry, horrible wilderness where they were thirsty and hungry because they couldn't find water or food where there were hot summer days that would beat upon them, where there were wild animals and poisonous snakes and scorpions that terrorized them, where their shoes would wear out in the, in the wilderness and their clothes would have gone bad for 40 years. But what would the Lord want them to remember about that time? What would he want them to remember about what he had done for them? Well, first of all, he wanted them to remember and never forget that he was the one who had delivered them from Egypt, from the slavery to the Egyptians, and brought them into freedom. And he wanted them never to forget that he was the one who, during those 40 years in that terrible wilderness, had preserved them. They had plenty to eat. They were satisfied with the food that they had. 
They had lots of water because he brought it right out of a hard rock in the wilderness. They had food every day because he gave them manna and quail to eat every single day. And he saw to it that even when those poisonous snakes bit them, they were able to live by looking at his snake on a pole. And he even caused their clothes not to wear out for 40 years in the wilderness. And their feet didn't even swell up after walking in that hot desert for 40 years. And what should they do because they remembered all of that? They should remember it so that they remembered to praise the Lord, to do what he was asking them to do. They should remember it so that they remembered to give God the glory and that they recognized that he was the one who merited all the goodness for what they had experienced in the wilderness and that they didn't become the objects of their own glory. The second thing God wanted them never to forget is what he was about to do for them in the promised land. Some of you may remember the movie Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I'm not talking about the Johnny Depp one. I'm talking about the one that was earlier with Gene Wilder. If you remember that movie, you might remember that Mr. Wonka sang a song to the children when he was about to take them into his chocolate factory. And it was called Pure Imagination. And as he sang that song, he was telling the kids about the fact that they were going to be able to eat things they would never imagined, to enjoy things in his Wonka land that they had never, ever seen before, that it would be beyond their wildest imagination. Well, that's what God was doing for his people of Israel. In this promised land, he was telling them that they were about to experience things that were beyond their wildest imagination. They would eat until they were satisfied. They would have plenty of water. They would live in fine homes that were permanent dwellings for them after being in the wilderness all those years living in tents. They would be protected by God so that they would have peace because God would fight for them and protect them. God was going to give them lots of cattle and flocks and silver and gold. In other words, they would be wealthy under God's protecting hand. They would have children that were always healthy. God would provide for them day in and day out in that wonderful new land. What an amazing land this was going to be for them. How wonderful it would be when God heaped these blessings upon them. Can you imagine what it would be like for someone who lived in the 1800s to suddenly be plopped into America today? How amazing that would be for them. Maybe some of our ancestors lived at that time, and you've heard the stories, right? They didn't have any running water. If they had to use the bathroom, it was an outhouse in the backyard, right? If they wanted to take a bath, it was fill a tub that was in one of their rooms, and probably four or five people used the same water because they had to pour it in and bring it in and heat it on the stove. They didn't have electricity. They had to use lamps and candles to light their house. They didn't have air conditioning when it got hot in the summertime, and they had to burn a wood-burning stove to try to keep it warm in the wintertime. And if they wanted to go anywhere, they had to ride a horse or go in a buggy. And there was no heat as they went in the wintertime. If they wanted to contact anybody, maybe they had a telegraph that they could use to contact somebody else somewhere else. Now consider a person who is living in those conditions, plopped into America today, running water, toilets that flush, showers anytime you want them, electricity, right? They can cook. And they don't have to use a stove. They can use the microwave or an air fryer or their Instapot. They can travel around in cars or planes or even rockets. They have all the conveniences you can imagine. They even have computers. They have the ability to Zoom and see people that are way around the world, person to person. And they can take their phones and carry them wherever they want. How absolutely unimaginable that would be to somebody who lived in the 1800s. How absolutely blessed you and I are to live in a country with such amazing blessings today. But you know, there's an old 
German proverb that goes like this. It takes strong legs to stand under good days. Do you understand what that proverb's saying? It's saying that it's difficult sometimes for us to remember who we are and what we have when everything is successful, when we're truly blessed. And that's what God was warning his people about when he told them that he was going to bring them into a land that he was going to provide everything for them. And he warned them. He said, when you are there and you have all of this wonderful success and all of these possessions, be careful that you don't forget. Don't forget who gave them to you. Don't forget who it is that provided all of these things for you. Because if you forget, then you will begin to turn away from me. Because if you forget, then you will become proud and you will think you are responsible for all the things that you enjoy and you will no longer follow me. Don't forget. But unfortunately, history tells us they did forget. They forget, forgot the God who delivered them from Egypt. They forgot the God who brought them into the promised land and gave them all of these blessings. They forgot that God and they began to worship idols and they became proud and turned away from the Lord. Is there a danger for us to do that today? The Lord has blessed us so richly but indeed, there is a danger that we begin to think that the house that we have, the car that we drive, the things that we have are all because of our own hard work, because of our own ingenuity. But did you hear what Moses told the people of Israel? Remember the Lord your God, because it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. If we begin to forget that, if we begin to forget that finally even our abilities come from the Lord so that we can produce wealth, then it's going to change how we live. Then instead of praising and giving thanks to our God, we may start to boast and become proud about ourselves. Then instead of using all the gifts that he has given us to serve others, we might begin to become self-centered in our use of our gifts. Then instead of being content with what the Lord has given us, either little or much, we might begin to grumble and complain and be jealous of others. You see, the sins of the past are our sins too. And we have to also repent because we have often forgotten our Lord God and the blessings he has given to us. But you know what? Our Lord God is such a giving and gracious God. He's given us more blessings than we can even imagine and also blessings that are out of this world. And among those blessings, and the greatest of all, is that he has given us forgiveness. Perfect forgiveness from even our forgetting him and not giving thanks. And he's given that to us when he gave us his own son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who died and rose again for you and for me. And because he did that, he also gives us his love every single day. And that's why he continues to provide for us. And that's why we can have peace and joy in our lives because we know that God is going to continue to provide for us. And he promises us that he's going to send his angels to watch over us every single day. And that all that happens to us, he's going to work out for our eternal good. God promises that he's going to give us comfort when our loved ones pass away before we do because he comforts us in knowing that those who have died in faith will be in heaven enjoying his eternal blessings. And he even promises us that when we die, we also will gain that wonderful inheritance of heaven and be with him forever. These are all the blessings that God continues to pour out on us because he is a gracious and good God. So dear friends, never forget. Never forget what God has done for you. Never forget what he's given you. 
never forget what he's going to give you yet in the future. Never forget, though, doesn't mean just to remember. It means live your life in thanksgiving. It means live your life to God and keep him first and let nothing else take his place in your life. You see, our God isn't an ogre. He loves to bless his people. And he heaps blessings on us every single day. And so our Christian mantra will always remain, never forget our gracious God. In gratitude, on this day of national gratitude, we bring also our gifts to the Lord and place them in the plate at the back of our chapel or use the electronic means indicated in the worship folder. But do note that today, on this Thanksgiving Day, all the gifts that are given will be sent to Wells Care and Relief, which is a part of our wells that particularly helps people in need with physical blessings. Then I invite you to please stand as we bring our thanksgiving prayer to the Lord. We'll speak it responsively as printed in your worship folder. Give thanks to the Lord who is good. Come, let us praise God joyfully. For the good world, for things great and small, beautiful and awesome, for unseen and, un seen and unseen splendors, for human life, for talking and moving and thinking together, for common hopes and hardships shared from birth until our dying, we thank you, for work to do and strength to work, for the comradeship of labor, for exchanges of good humor and encouragement. We thank you, Lord God. For marriage, for the mystery and joy of flesh made one, for mutual forgiveness and burdens shared, for secrets kept in love. We thank you, Lord God. For family, for living together and eating together, for family amusements and family pleasures. We thank you, Lord God. For children, for their energy and curiosity, for their brave play and startling frankness, for their sudden sympathies. We thank you, Lord God. For the young, for their high hopes, for their candid criticism, for their search for freedom. We thank you, Lord God. For growing up and growing old, for wisdom deepened by experience, for rest in leisure for time made precious by its passing. We thank you, Lord God. For your help in times of doubt and sorrow, for healing our diseases, for preserving us in temptation and danger. We thank you, Lord God. For the church into which we have been called, for the good news we receive by word and sacrament, for our life together in the Lord, for your Holy Spirit, who guides our steps and brings us gifts of faith and love, who prays in us and prompts our grateful worship. We praise you, O God. Above all, O God, for your Son, Jesus Christ, who lived and died and lives again for our salvation, for our hope in him, and for the joy of serving him, Give thanks to the Lord, who is good. Lord God, all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works come from you. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments. Defend us also from the fear of our enemies that we may live in peace and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join in praying our Lord's Prayer. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Please be seated as we conclude our service with our final hymn number 609. Welcome again to our Thanksgiving worship service. To all of you, a special welcome to those of you who have joined us online this evening. We're glad that you could join us tonight. We invite you all to come back and worship with us on Sunday morning. Again, we worship at 9 o'clock. A couple of things that I give thanks for this Thanksgiving is all of you. I give thanks to the Lord for you as fellow Christians with me and fellow uh, members of Zion who are working in this area to share Jesus with others. I thank the Lord for the privilege of serving as your pastor. May God bless you as you give thanks tomorrow and keep you safe if you travel. Now, we'd like to invite you all to join us downstairs as we have some pie to devour in the lower level and enjoy a little fellowship time. <laughs>